It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the, the Charlotte 49ers head softball coach, Coach Ashley Chastain. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks, Brandon. We really appreciate the opportunity to talk about the program and the university. Um, you know, it's always really exciting uh, when we can just share about the program and, and promote the university. So thank you for having me on. Thank you. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in coaching college softball? Well, I have a, a master's in secondary education, so I guess you could say I thought I was going to be a high school history teacher. Uh, I have a BA in history and then stayed in school to get a secondary education uh, master's degree. Um, so I wanted to, wanted to teach high school history. That was the plan. And then I did my student teaching and went through grad school and just really decided I couldn't leave the game and wanted to coach. So kind of started on that path. Uh, so I really find that most days, um, even when I was an assistant, now that I had coach, I mean, so much of it is the same. I mean, communication, learning how to manage a group, manage people, classroom, the field, it's, it's all it's all really close. It correlates really well. So I do find that I use a lot of the same skills that I learned in my master's degree. It's just I'm outside instead of inside a classroom. Of course, what was it like going to college and playing for the Gamecocks? Oh, it was an awesome experience. It's a great university. You know, it's, I was in the program at a time where there was a lot of change. Um, and so I played for Hall of Famer Joyce Compton, who um, is fantastic and that was uh, a really great experience she's a legend in the game and then I was also there for the transition to Bev Smith um, who's there currently I think she's now in her 11th or 12th year there I can't believe it's already been that long so it was a really cool experience for me I learned a lot playing for coach Compton and the transition to coach Smith so it was a really fun time to be in the program and looking back on it there was just a lot of change that happened um you know, the stadium wasn't built yet that they currently play in, but the field location is the same. So, you know, when I go back there, it still feels like home, even though it's changed visually a lot. Of course, what was that like, obviously, putting on those uniforms and representing the game cops? It's special. I mean, it's kind of what we talk about with recruits here, even coming to Charlotte. I mean, no matter where you go, whether you wear, um, you know, the Carolina logo um, or you come here and you wear the All NC, um, you just want to feel really good about where you're going to play and you feel like you have a lot of pride in it and you want to leave. Uh, leave the place better than you found it. So whether that's here at Charlotte or for me, it was in South Carolina, it's really important in the recruiting process. And we talk a lot about that with our incoming families and recruits. And we want them to be really proud about wearing the logo. And that's definitely how I felt about wearing the Gamecock and being a Gamecock. And that's what I hope for, for all the players that play here at Charlotte and um, is that they leave just really proud of wearing the uniform and they'll always carry that with them through their whole life. Of course, as a player, what was it like playing in the SEC, playing against Georgia Bulldogs, Florida, and even Tennessee? It was big time. I mean, you didn't really feel like most weekends you could breathe. You never felt like you had a break. That's a fantastic league in our game. It's really competitive and um, really it's kind of the pinnacle of college softball right now. They kind of set the standard for a lot of different things when it comes to financial resources, facilities. Um, they kind of lead the way and, and make our game as a whole better for all of us. Um, so really proud to have been a part of that league um, as a player. And then later on uh, in my life and earlier in my career as a coach. So um, it's, it's special and it's, um, it's really competitive it makes you better. It kind of makes you better where you get out, you know, it's, a, it's not a league that you can kind of test the waters in with anything. You kind of have to be prepared to go full force um, every single match. Of course, what were some of your playing accomplishments? Oh gosh, Brandon, I do not remember most of this. Um, you know, for me, it really ever 
it wasn't really ever about me. Um, that, that is a testament to my parents and how they raised me. Um, me and my sister both played sports, mostly softball. We played a couple other sports in high school, but you know, we were the family that we got in the car and, you know, me and Amanda, my sister, Amanda's my younger sister. Um, if we ever started talking about ourselves, I mean, it was like right away, Hey, it's about the team. It's about, you know, what the coach wants. It's, um, you know, I just was really fortunate and blessed. So I don't really remember a ton of personal accolades um, at all. I just, I just remember what it was like when we won as a team or we had those team moments. Um, you know, I, I got a couple um, academic awards on the Dean's List a couple times. Uh, now that I'm in my 30s, that I appreciate that more than I did then. Uh, but those are really the only things I remember. Of course, how is that like, obviously, coaching as the pitching coach for the Germany national team. That was really cool. Um, that was a time in my life that I didn't expect, you know, a chapter in my life that just kind of fell in my lap, really great opportunity. So I got done with grad school at South Carolina in 2012 and got the opportunity to go over and play in, a, in the German league myself as a player. And so got to pitch for two years with the Vesling Vermins. And it was, it was awesome. I mean, we traveled all over Europe. I went to nine different countries while I was there and the head coach of my team I was fortunate enough that he coached the German national team and so when I was there he asked if I would help with the pitching uh, for with the German national team so I would go to their workouts and coach them up and went to a couple of their events with them um, the European Cup was in Prague that year so uh, we went over that was the farthest east I went in Europe was I got to go to um, to Prague and that was just some experiences and in, in times of my life that I'll never forget um, that I talk about still frequently with my friends and my family. So once in a lifetime opportunity, learned a lot and got to see a lot of the world that I never imagined I would see. Of course, how is it like obviously returning back to your alma mater to become a grad assistant coach? Well, I stayed on. So I got, I got done with my playing career, my eligibility in 11. And then, um, you know, that was Bev's first year. My senior year was her first year. And so the program was just experiencing a ton of change. And, you know, I found out during that year that I wanted to coach. And so I went to her and I said, Hey, you know, like, can I, can I stay on staff? You know, what does that look like? And so she, I was fortunate enough that she allowed me to stay on staff as a grad assistant while I was student teaching in 2012. And that was before I went to Europe and she taught me a lot. I mean, that transition from playing to any type of pitching role, whether it is a grad assistant, a volunteer assistant, um, or even a full-time first assistant um, position from the time you're a player to a coach. It's so different. You learn so much. And, you know, the time when I was in it, you know, I was just trying to do the best I could. I was finishing grad school. Grad school is a lot harder than, you know, undergrad. So it was, you know, getting the degree. Um, but Bev and that staff at the time, Janelle Brenneman, who's now at UNC Greensboro, Cal Beeman, who's not in the game anymore, but he was on staff um, at South Carolina with Bev. And we just, it, I just learned a lot. I will say that. I, I think back to that year as a grad assistant often and how much that taught me. And then I try to use that experience now to help our players that transition into that role. Cause it's tough. Like when you get done playing and you want to be a coach and figuring out um, what that looks like and what that means and finding your coaching voice and doing a lot of tasks that no one wants to do I mean I think that's coaching um early on is that you, you kind of you do all the little tedious hard things um, in the program and it makes being a player in the program like really special because you think back you're like oh when I was a player I didn't even know some of this stuff happened you know um so it makes you appreciate it a lot but it's a fun it was a fun year it was a tough year I learned I learned a lot about myself in grad school and uh, and then as a graduate assistant becoming a coach, but it definitely set me up for success and I was fortunate enough to be under Bev during that time. Of course, how is it like leaving your alma mater to go to College of Charleston to become the pitching coach? Well, you know, <laughs> Linda Califatis, I mean, she was my first boss um, after I left Carolina and that was my first time full, uh, full time job as an assistant. I was the pitching coach at College of Charleston and Linda was awesome. I mean, it could not have asked for a better first boss. She was um, so generous and so fun to be around. She had been in the game a long time, long time head coach at Ohio State. 
before uh, she came to college in Charleston. And so like, she just kind of let me do my thing. I mean, let me experiment a lot with different stuff with the pitching staff, you know, she didn't micromanage me. She had really high expectations, um, which is, you know, kind of what you want from a boss and a head coach as an assistant, you know, you want to be given things and, you know, delegate uh, responsibilities. And because that means she, you know, ultimately she trusted me to do that. But I learned a lot. She was really patient with me, really generous. Um, you know, she communicated really well. And just being around her for those three years, I learned what it meant to be a head coach that the players really loved. I mean, our players at Paula Charleston loved playing for her. And so when you showed up on game day, like her strength, like she knew how to get the team ready to play. Um, she had done that a lot at Ohio State with her success there. And that translated really well to that program at the time. And um, so I learned a lot from her. She was great. And it's funny because at the time, I didn't really realize this, but starting your career in Charleston, South Carolina is kind of like starting your career in paradise. And so it was hard to leave. You know, some people say retire in, at the beach, retire in paradise, and maybe one day I'll go back there when I'm done coaching. But I mean, to start your career in college, uh, at College Charleston in Charleston, South Carolina at the beach is, it's something I'll always cherish. I mean, it was an awesome time in my life. How was it like getting to coach in the Big Ten and go to Michigan? That was super cool. Um, never envisioned myself living in that part of the country. You know, I'm from Atlanta, Southern girl. Uh, love the, the warm climate. You know, my staff now makes fun of me. If it's 50 degrees outside, I mean, you come to the field or you come anywhere that our team's at and it's 50. I got my parka on. Um, you know, I'm, I like the warmer temperatures. But at the time, you know, I felt like it was a good step in my career. And, you know, that I was really fortunate again to Linda Calcatus at College Charleston for, you know, encouraging me to take that step. You know, it's never hard as a head coach to feel like you're going to lose an assistant or lose an assistant that you really trust. Um, but she, you know, she didn't hold me back. And she said, hey, like, this is a good opportunity. She would obviously been in the Big Ten a long time. And she knew Jackie Joseph really well. And then Beth Smith knew Jackie Joseph really well. So that was kind of the coaching tree. I, I would say once you start coaching, you start building your tree and all your branches and you, people that you know start to connect. So that was kind of how that happened for me was Beth Smith, Linda Calafatis, and then all of a sudden I was at Michigan State with Jackie Joseph. And Jackie is an amazing person. She's one of the most generous, kind, passionate people I've ever been around. I mean, she welcomed me to East Lansing with open arms, um, you know, a Southern girl living in the mitten. And, you know, it was definitely a step up as far as league goes. I mean, it was, it was a tougher league than the Colonial, which is what College of Charleston is in. And so I thought, I thought the, the pitchers were more talented. Um, you know, it was fun to kind of step into a staff that had some you know, some talent. They just needed some structure and some direction. And I, you know, worked really hard to bring that to them that fall of, gosh, that was the fall of 16. And so we worked really hard. And that, that season I was there in, in 17, you know, we won 34 games, which at the time for that program was a big step. And we beat Michigan in the semifinals of the Big Ten tournament, which they hadn't done in a while. And that was just a really cool group of players. Um, and Jackie built that team and she built that staff and all that credit goes to her. Uh, but she taught me a lot and I loved living in Michigan, especially this time of the year. Now that we're getting into the fall, gosh, it is beautiful up there. The weather is fantastic. Um, you know, I just remember all the trees changing and the landscape of the mitten itself is breathtaking. So it was a great experience and definitely a step up as far as collegiate softball in the Big Ten, you know, competing against Hutch and Northwestern and um, Ohio State and all those teams. It was, um, you know, it was competitive. How was that like, obviously, returning back to the SEC and coaching at Ole Miss and still getting to coach against teams like South Carolina, your alma mater? Yeah. So I ne it was kind of tough to leave Michigan State the way that I did. Um, you know, I left in the middle of the fall because um, Taryn Mowat, who – I followed at Old Miss, went to her alma mater, Arizona. So that was kind of, you know, every time a position opens, you know, you kind of have a kind of a domino effect of why it happened and then, you know, all the jobs that it opens. So Taryn left Old Miss and I got a call from Mike Smith. I knew Katie at the time, Katie Rekovich, now Katie Rekovich Browder. I knew her on that staff. Um, she was the third assistant at Old Miss at the time and her and I had created a really great friendship um she's one of my best friends but also a working relationship and so that was that was really cool I went down it was the middle of the fall it was an ideal timing to leave Michigan State but I went down and I interviewed and 
I, I really, really didn't want to leave Michigan, Michigan State, but I felt like it was an awesome opportunity for my career that I really couldn't pass up. Um, you know, the year prior to that, the 17 team had won the SEC tournament with Caitlin Lee. Um, I, think, I believe the tournament was in Knoxville that year. And so Ole Miss was hot. They were like the hottest team in America. And they lost Taryn to Arizona. And Mike called me and I went down. And I pretty much accepted the job right away. As soon as I, as soon as I left, we, we talked about it and I took it because I just felt like career-wise I couldn't turn it down. You know, when the SEC called, it's, you know, you have to pay attention to that just because of where that league is right now um, in the game. You know, that was, I guess now four, four years ago, there's a lot of other conferences that have started to, you know, rise I think, to the occasion, but it was special. You know, Oxford is a great place, very different than anywhere I've ever lived. I mean, it was very different than East Lansing and it was very different than Paul Charleston. It's a small, tiny town in Mississippi super tight knit, um, kind of in the middle of nowhere, but when you're in Oxford, it's a, it's a pretty magical place. Um, and so really enjoyed my time there, but that's kind of how it happened. You know, I think it was October of 17. Um, and unfortunately I had to step away from Michigan state. It was really just purely a career move. It wasn't anything personal. Of course, in the season of 2018, what was it like helping them lead and going to the NCA regionals? Yeah, so I stepped into the pitching staff. Uh, Mike Smith was great about that transition. Um, he was another one like Linda and Jackie. I've been really fortunate to work for awesome people. And so he just let me have the pitching staff. I mean, hired me to do a job and really let me do that job and didn't micromanage me and, and the pitchers. So kind of just got in there and, and evaluated where they're at. Taryn Moat's obviously very good at her job. So the staff was in really good shape. And so just, just kind of managed where they were at, started to create my own relationships, implement some of my own system that I knew had been successful in the past. Um, to that pitching staff, you know, you had Caitlin Lee, who had a ton of experience. I mean, just a really special arm and a special person. If you've ever, ever talked with Caitlin Lee, I mean, she's, she's dynamite. And um, so she was kind of the lead of the staff. And then, you know, we had an 18, Brittany Finney, who had transferred from Oklahoma a couple years prior and hadn't really pitched a lot at Ole Miss. She, she just didn't really, she was a, a, a three-way player. So she played first base and she pitched and she hit. And so we had to manage her time. And I think that first year, she probably did a little too much of all of it. And then in 19, when she really kind of broke through in the circle at Ole Miss, her and Molly Jacobson, we kind of narrowed her focus just to pitching and hitting and say, hey, we don't really need you to play first base. It was just a little too much to try to manage her time and training. And so we honed in and then 19, had a ton of success from Molly Jacobson, who I flew up in the middle of the season and watched her pitch in a gym in Des Moines, Iowa at her JUCO DMAC, um, and then rejoined the team for the series at LSU, which was that 19 inning game against Allie Wall Jasper and Caitlin Lee. If you look back on that, that was really fun. Um, but yeah, that was the time we were recruiting Molly Jacobson. Uh, that was an 18, I'm sorry, I apologize, 18. So then we brought Molly in a 19. And her and Finney kind of ran the league that year. I mean, they were really good. Molly was left-handed and very crafty, had a great change-up. And then Finney finally uh, established herself as a starter on the staff, as, as a pitcher, as a starter, and um, had a fantastic year. Really a power pitcher through 70-71, every pitch out of her hand, just like completely like dominated um the SEC that year so it was really fun 19 was a super fun year to be a pitching coach at Ole Miss I mean Molly Jacobson and Brittany Finney made made my life really easy they were awesome to work with and then Caitlin Lee was on our staff that year so Caitlin Lee stayed around and um you know she worked with me and worked with our staff and now she's off doing um you know her own thing with her own coaching career um but my time at Ole Miss was special whenever you can get to super regional you know, those are those are years in your career that change your career and and years you'll never forget. Um, and so that was um, the 19 season was one that I'll always hold close with Finney and with um, Molly Jacobson. Of course, how is it like getting your first head coaching job at Charlotte 49ers? Yeah, so um, we were at the Super Regional um, in Tucson. Arizona playing Arizona in 19 and then I, I had gotten a call from the administration here at Charlotte. 
Uh, Chris Thompson, Mike Hill. Mike Hill had been at Florida for years, had been at Charlotte for a year and was making changes in certain programs. And they both called me to see if I was interested in the position here. They would had a really long time head coach, Amy DeVos here, who had built the program and been here for 20 something years and was really respected in Charlotte and, and had a respected program. And so we were competing at the Super Regional at the time. And so I kind of just left it as, I'm interested in discussing about the position. I always knew I wanted to be a head coach. Like I knew that. And I had been offered a couple other jobs the, the previous years and just never felt like it was the right one. And I didn't want to take the wrong job, especially being an assistant in the SEC, right? Like that's a great, um, great opportunity. So I didn't want to leave that for just any head coaching position. So I told him, I said, I'd, let, I'd love to talk to you about the opportunity after the Super Regional. Um, and so I said, just let me get through the, the Super Regional so unfortunately, we did lose that Super Regional Arizona. They went on to the World Series and we flew back to Oxford and everything happened really fast. I mean, within a few days, I visited Charlotte and really felt like this place just really, it needed a lot of new energy. You know, this campus, this university, the people here, the location is dynamite. And, and so I came here and assessed what the program was and then what it could be. And I was like, okay, is there enough there to make it that, right? With my system, with my people, with our players. And I, I felt like the answer was yes. You know, and that was really hard to leave um, Oxford and, and Old Miss after such a successful season in 19 um, and leaving Molly Jacobson. She had another year, but you know, I felt like it was the right opportunity. So I took it and moved to Charlotte and that summer of 19 is a blur, um, you know, um, but I would, I would do it all over again. It's been the most awesome experience of my life um, as far as my career goes. And I love the city. I love the people here. I love this program. I love all the players that we've brought in, all of the future players that we have coming in over the next few years. It's just a really exciting time to be a Charlotte 49er, to live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and, you know, to be a part of building this program to compete at a national level. And that's the goal is that we want to go to the NCAA tournament. And we were super close last year. And so that kind of chip is, is weighing on us a little bit with this upcoming team that we're training right now. <laughs> um, but we're, we're really excited about what we have going on here in the past. You know, this is now going into year four. I wouldn't change a thing. It's been super fun. And I'm so blessed and so grateful to Mike Hill and Chris Thomason for the opportunity and everything they've done for me since I've been here, the way they support our program. We've got new facilities being built. Um, you know, there's just so much about this program that's coming to life and changing. And I'm blessed to lead it. Of course, can you talk about, of course, the culture that you started to build for the 49ers softball program? Yeah, you know, I get asked that frequently about what the culture of the program is. And, you know, the best way I can describe it is the culture is the locker room. That's the players. You know, it's like we don't have words on a wall that, you know, I can just say, like, our culture is this. We have a ton of accountability in our program. I believe to my core accountability is a very key trait of any successful group organization, no matter if you're in college athletics or in corporate America or wherever you are. I think accountability is huge. So we don't have a ton of that. You know, we have a ton of accountability. We have a ton of love in the program. Um, you know, we've, we've gotten a ton of transfers from other places that have come in and really helped change our program. And, you know, just kind of wrapping our arms around the team and saying, like, hey, we're going to do this together. Um, and we're going to work really hard. You know, hard work, accountability, a lot of love. Um, but the, the culture it's the players, it's their behavior, it's their actions, it's the way that they do things day to day. That's our culture. And so, you know, I'm like, hey, if you want to know what our program is like, you need to come spend time with the players. You need to come observe us at practice. You need to come be around the team. And then you can get a really good feel for what it's like to be here every day because it is really special. Who are some of the teams that you face each week in your conference? Well, we're in the Conference USA right now. Um, we're going into the Americans. We've got one final year in Conference USA where the past couple of years we've gone head to head with Western Kentucky, who's fantastic. Um, and Amy's done a great job with their program. North Texas, Ronnie DeLong, he's, I mean, they're super tough. They're going with us to the American Conference. Marshall, um, Megan has done a fantastic job at Marshall. FAU, you know, Jen Joyce built that program 
and now Jordan Clark has taken it over. So UAB, Joe Guthrie, who's, who was Jimmy Clytus to Joe Guthrie, uh, and now they've had a recent change there as well. So we've got a ton of really great opponents in Conference USA. Now some of those are going with us to the American Conference, which we'll compete in in 2024 for the first season, which we are pumped about. Um, but non-conference, you know, located in Charlotte, North Carolina, you drive two or three hours north, south, east, west, and you're going to hit a softball powerhouse. And that, to the core, is one of the reasons I took the job is because they felt like we could build the team with a competitive schedule to get us the NCAA tournament. And, you know, you go two hours to Clemson, you go two hours to Chapel Hill, NC State, Duke, you go two hours south to South Carolina, a little bit farther up to Virginia Tech, Virginia. I mean, we play an ACC non-conference schedule. If you look at our schedule, that's about to come out for the spring of 23. Most of our Wednesdays are ACC opponents. We have a couple SEC opponents. We're going to Athens, Georgia to play um, in Tony Baldwin's tournament the second week of season, taking Ella Chancey home to Athens to play in front of her people. Uh, but the opportunity for us to play really good competition in Charlotte, North Carolina is – pivotal to our success it really is pivotal to our, to our success and I didn't feel like I ever wanted to take a head coaching job that in a geographical location that was isolated or really hard to get to I think accessibility is key accessibility to really good competition and accessibility to really good players um, and so that was really important so we play a really tough ACC power five non-conference schedule early in the season um, in those February weekends and on Wednesdays um, outside of our Conference USA schedule that's now about to be an American schedule, which, I mean, everyone in college softball knows the American is, is no joke. We're excited about stepping into that conference with USF and Wichita State and all those guys that are really respected um, and great, great opponents. Coach Ashley, get back in because you will not finish the last few questions because the timer's at one minute. So okay. just get back in and I'll start it from the next question. Same okay. with you, Brian, if you want to get back in and stuff. Gotcha. Of course, what is it like getting to play those conference games and then those non-conference games and getting to go to like East Carolina and UNC? Yeah, you know, I think the ECU rivalry is going to be really fun. That's one that we don't have currently. So when we go into the American, East Carolina is in the American. And so I think um, just in the conference realignment, the rivalry that we're going to create with ECU in the state itself in all of our sports is something that's going to be really cool for everyone. It's going to be really great for the players and the program. It's going to be great for the community. It's going to be great for the state. So that's really big for us. Um, we love the UNC um, rivalry, Charlotte and UNC. And it's kind of special for us because um, our associate head coach, Taylor White, went to UNC. She's a Tar Heel, and she, um, you know, was a awesome player in their program. And, you know, she's really still connected with their program. As you hope, as an alumni, she just went back for their first pitch dinner this past weekend and spent time there with all of her alumni um, and Coach Papa, who's – just a legend in the game herself, especially in the state of North Carolina. So, ton of respect for their program at UNC, and we love that rivalry. Um, love getting to play them year in and year out. Um, so, you know, we've got Greensboro, we, Greensboro and Janelle Brenham, and they've done a fantastic job. You know, they're just an hour up 85. So, you know, that's a really great midweek opponent for us. We usually do a home and home with them every single season. So we've got a ton of great coaches and great rivalries around us. Like I said, you can go two or three years, or I'm sorry, two or three hours in any direction and you just hit a softball powerhouse. Um, so we love competition. We're really competitive in our program and we want to continue to play those teams and just um, building softball in the area, building this program here on this university. And you just can't do that if you're not around, you know, great coaches and great programs within driving distance. So we feel really blessed to be located where we are. Of course, what does the recruitment process look like for prospective student athletes looking to come to Charlotte 49ers? Well, it's an exciting time to come here. I, I tell fam families and recruits that all the time. You know, I'm like, it's the right time to be at Charlotte. It's the right time to be a Niner. You know, we've got a new facility being built right now. So it's really fun to be able to show renderings of that facility, that clubhouse that's going to be just for softball here on campus. 
Um, so it's, it's really fun to see their faces light up and we've got an end date to that, right? So that's a 2024 end date for us as we go into the American conference. So the, the kids that I'm sitting down and talking with now, parents, they're going to be living in that building. So it is real. It's, it's not something that we're talking about. It's going to happen in, you know, 10 years from now, it's, it's now we're, we're designing it as we speak. So, um, it's, it's a really fun time to be here. And our current players are setting the standard. And so our current players would say to future Niners, Courtney Grimion actually said this in her senior video last year. She was a transfer from ULL and spent two seasons with us and just fantastic person and fantastic player for us. So grateful for her to be, be a Niner. But in her senior video, she said to future Niners, the standard has been set and the sky is the limit. And I don't think I could even say it better than that. That's exactly what we say to future recruits and families that we want to be a part of our program um, is that, hey, the standard's being set by the current players and the sky's the limit for you to come in and change the program and keep taking it to heights that it's never been and doing things that the program's never done. You know, it's, it's just, that's special. You know, that's really special. I remember back to when I was at South Carolina and the transition of playing for a legend in Coach Compton to playing for Bev Smith, who had been at North Carolina with Donna Papa as a player and as a coach for years. And, you know, just the transition of the program. And now I'm getting to sit in that seat as we transition this program. And, you know, we're in year four. I still keep talking about a transition, but it still feels like every team is very different and new and everything is growing and, and momentum forward as a softball program here at Charlotte and as a department. And I think everyone here at Charlotte's kind of doing that under Mike's leadership. So it's the standards been set, the sky's the limit, and it's the right time to be at Charlotte. It's the right time to be a Niner. And we're, we're really excited about that. Of course, as a head coach, what are some of the things that you look at in those players when going out and recruiting? You know, I think we just look for players that we know are going to work really hard. I think, I think as a high schooler coming into a, a competitive collegiate program, I think the amount of work it takes to be great and the amount of work it takes to be really successful, a lot of times is a learning process. And so I look for players that I think are going to be able to, to push the limits on how hard they work. Um, players that are really passionate about the game. Obviously, players that have great integrity that I feel like are going to come in and represent the program really well. You know, players that I know that if, if you sat down and talked to them, that they would represent the program and talk about the program in, in a bright light. Um, so, yeah, a lot of integrity, character, um, and on top of that, just a ton of passion and work ethic. And then, you know, there, there is an aspect of talent, right? We're trying to find players and bring in players that we feel like their softball skill set on top of all of those other intangibles and that makeup, that their skill is going to translate to what we want to do. So, you know, we want to compete in the NCAA tournament. And we want to compete at the top of the American Conference. We want to win championships. And so we, on top of that intangible character and work ethic and passion for the game, trying to match that with we, what we believe is skill that's going to bring us that success, right? So players that are skilled enough to compete at that level. So, you know, the recruiting process is a grind. It's brutal for the recruit and their family and for us as a staff, you know, just trying to marry all that stuff together and find the perfect match and then getting a yes, you know. Um, and once you get the yes, it's like that starts the process really of integrating that player and family into the program. So it's um, it's a really fun process, but it's, it's definitely a complex, I think, process. It's not super simple, you know, it's, it's a complex process of figuring out who those families and recruits and future Niners are and then how we get them to Charlotte and then grow them to be great people and, and great athletes and um, really successful in all aspects. Of course, as a head coach, what is it like obviously seeing those athletes put on that 49ers jersey and fall in love with the colors? Yeah, it's it's indescribable. It's, you know, it's hard for me to put into words what I feel like on game days when the the team and the players like Bailey Benoit, who was our first program All-American this past year. And 
the pride that she has, you know, putting on the uniform and then walking out to the field and competing in that uniform and just seeing it all come together. Game days for me is like, they're just, it's like kind of like an awe of the whole production. Like I watch my staff and I, I cannot go through this interview without mentioning, you know, Taylor Wyke and Jody Davidson and now CJ Layton and all the all the assistants that I've worked with over the past four years. There's a couple other in there that have gone on to great opportunities. Um, but I would the program would not be climbing and have so much momentum and be a really awesome place that people want to be a part of now without those guys. I mean, Taylor Wyke has done an, an amazing job you know, with the players and the offense and she runs the infield. She does so much for the program day in and day out and is now our new associate head coach. And um, so to watch her and Jody Davidson and, you know, the rest of the staff and the support staff and the players put on the uniform on game day and everything just comes together, you know, it's like you just kind of sit back and you're like, yeah, this is, this feels right. You know, it feels right. And it makes me really proud that the players are really proud to put on the uniform and they fight for each other and they fight for the program and the university. So it's indescribable. And it's, you know, it's moments that you kind of just takes your breath away and you kind of sit back and watch it happen. And then, you know, I go back to pitch calling because that's my primary duty when the game starts is calling the game, but it's great. It's, it's exactly why I do what I do. You know, I think back to over over a decade ago, of like, okay, I don't want to be a high school history teacher. I want to be a collegiate softball coach. I want to be just like Beth Smith. I want to be just like Joyce Compton. And, um, you know, I, I think back to when I made that decision. Now, those moments of watching them compete in the uniform as a Charlotte 49er, I'm like, yeah, like, I now remember why I wanted to do it in the first place. Of course, what are some of your future plans for the 49ers program? Championships. Um, like I said, we're, we got one more year to compete for a conference USA championship and we are not looking past that. You know, we're really excited about competing in that league this year. The, the league was really good last year in North Texas, Western Kentucky, UAB, Marshall. I mean, those guys are, are super tough and those series get really gritty um, in conference USA. And so we're really excited about competing in that league one more time. And then our eyes are then set on competing at a high level in the American. I mean, we want to step into the American competitive um, and compete for championships in the American conference. And, you know, we want to make the NCAA pro season. We were really close again in our large bid this past year in the 2022 season. And so we're going to continue on that path. You know, we, we talk about championships and postseason and a regional and a super regional and the college world series we verbally talk about that stuff because I just, I think, you know, if you don't talk about it, it doesn't become real. It doesn't become real to players. Like they need to know that my staff and I, like that's what we believe we can do. And that's what we've set out to do. And that's how we train every day. That's, you know, the detail we put into our thought process on the, the players and practice and everything that the team does. And so that's the plan is to win championships, go to regionals, go to super regionals, go to the college world series. And we believe that you can do that in Charlotte, North Carolina. And so we're just, every decision we make, that's, that's ultimately what drives the decision. You know, is this decision going to get us that uh, for the program? So yeah, that's, that's the, that's the expectation as the head coach and, you know, the administration is on board. They, they want championships. They care about this program. They care about the, the players. They care about the success of the program. Mike and CT are super passionate about softball and, um, and Charlotte softball. So yeah, that's, that's the backing of the program. That's where we're going. What advice would you have those high school athletes that are looking to play collegiate softball? What would I say to them? Um, you know, I, I think I probably say this at camp a lot because um, I think the most interactions I have with just the general high school softball population is usually at our camps, you know, people that come in and want to get better at the game and the skills and also want to get in front of us to be recruited. You know, it's just, you got to have a passion for it. It's too, it's too much time at this level and too much investment to not really love it. So you got to have a, a passion for it. You got to have a passion to be about the team and to move the program in the right direction and add a lot of value to the program winning and being successful. Um, and in that process, like it's never about you. It's always about the team. It's not about your personal success. I mean, Bailey Vinoy was our first program All-American 
in 2022 and she is a team player like nothing is ever about her I mean she cares more about the team's success than her own success and that is why individually I believe she's so successful um you know outside of just she's a super talented player and so yeah like work really hard make it about the team um, get as good as you can at the game expose yourself to as many programs as possible I mean I tell our campers that you might not fit at Charlotte, you know, you might not fit as a Charlotte 49er, but there's a home for you to play college softball at some level. You know, there's so many great programs and so many great coaches and, you know, just try to get in front of as many as you can and don't pigeonhole yourself into, you know, like, I want to go here. Um, you know, try to make your list of intangibles, non-negotiables that you're looking for and then figure out what programs fit that. And, you know, do your homework on that because, like I said, there's so many great programs, so many great coaches, not only in the state of North Carolina, but in this region. Um, so, you know, be open to all of that. What advice would you have those college athletes that are looking to play for Athletes Unlimited or even go to Team USA to play professionally? Yeah, we've got a couple on our team that are really interested in that, and that will be a first for us as a program is, you know, getting those, you know, invitations to the USA tryouts and, you know, getting um, drafted. And so none of that happens unless you have a lot of success, you know, so it, I think you just got to put in, put in the work and you've got to be really talented and you've got to put yourself in a program and around coaches that are going to develop you. I think um, you can, I think you need to go to a college. Pro what I believe personally is that you've got to go to a college program that you're going to walk in a certain player on the field and you're going to walk out a different player. And so you're going to get, you're going to get as good as you can be. Right. So like whatever your ceiling is, like you've got to be in a program and around coaches that are going to get you to that ceiling. And that's going to be your best chance at getting drafted and playing professionally or getting a USA tryout invite, or, you know, getting an opportunity to get into those systems because that those systems and that group, I mean, it's, I mean, those are the best. And if you want to be that, then you have to be one of them. Um, and so just, you know, being a program that you feel like is going to expose you to be the best player possible. What advice would you have future head coaches that are looking to get started in coaching at college softball? Um, college coaching is a lot about the people you surround yourself with. Your success is about the people you surround yourself with. And so for me, just even talking with you for the past hour, I've spoken so much about Joyce Compton and Beth Smith and Linda Calfatis and Jackie Joseph and Mike Smith and my staff now, Taylor White and Jody Davidson. And, um, so I, it's about the people. It's about who you know. You've got to be around good people that are going to give you good advice as a head coach. And you got to lean on your people and keep those people close, right? Like that circle doesn't have to be very large. It can be, you know, a tight knit in our circle, but it has to be people that are going to tell you what you don't want to hear sometimes. And um, people that you trust, they're going to give you the right advice, no matter what the situation. So it's about the people you're around. Those That's going to really make or break um, your career as a head coach, but I would also argue as an assistant, you know, like I, I believe that rings true for us when I was an assistant and even for the assistant coaches I'm around now. So, you know, it's a, keep your circle tight and trust those people, ask those people for advice. Um, you know, and, and if you need to be around better people, put yourself around better people, go to programs that have good people, and that's the reason that they're successful. So I think that's going to like your coaching tree that we spoke about earlier. That's how that's going to, that tree is going to flourish and bloom and like be really um, successful in leading your own career. Um, so yeah, it's, it's about who you're around really. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Charlotte 49er softball program? Yeah, at Charlotte softball, we, we post on Twitter a lot. You know, that's a great way to kind of keep, up with the ins and outs of our program, even day to day. So like yesterday, we have a Rawlings contract and a couple of our kids got their new custom Rawlings gloves in and we posted them on Twitter. I mean, it just gives you kind of like fun insight to what's going on day to day, either at practice or something fun going on in the program. So that's where you can find the most up-to-date information. Um, you know, I have a Twitter account, but I would rather you follow our program's Twitter than, than my Twitter, but you can find me on Twitter. I believe it's just at Ashley Chastain. If you go on our 
um, our Charlotte softball Twitter page, you can find me pretty easily on there. And I would say follow our players, like whether you're a high school player now and you're listening to this and, you know, I would go on and, and look at our roster and like, who do you really admire on our team and go follow them on Twitter because it's going to give you a better idea of what it's like to be in their shoes, um, you know, the things that they're doing, what your social media page should look like, because that is huge in the recruiting process is how you brand yourself and what you put out to the world um, to represent you and your family. That's a huge part, a huge step in the recruiting process for us. So yeah, follow our players um, on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter. That's, that's a great way to stay connected. Thank you again, Coach Ashley Shastain, for your interview, and best of luck in your future as the Charlotte 49ers head softball coach. Thanks, Brandon. Really appreciate you having me on. Thanks. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again. You've been watching Coach Brandon Ashley Sports Shastain Talk. Best of luck Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.